Hello, my name is Tawana Brown, and I serve as the Assistant Director in Parent and Family Programs. So thank you so much for joining us today. Today we're going to talk a little bit about orientation and what that will look like for you as a parent and also for your student. And so we have Kim Sterrett, who is the director here in Parent and Family Programs. And we also have uh, Stephen Thomas, who is the director of orientation. Um, and so we'll start off with you, Stephen. Thank you for joining us. If you could just tell us a little bit about what um, orientation is gonna look like this year, that would be great. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thank you, Tawana, for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk to everybody. Uh, once again, my name is Stephen Thomas and I am the Associate Director of the Office of Orientation and Special Programs. Uh, we are really excited that we're able to bring a majority of our sessions to campus this summer. Um, orientation is going to look a little bit different than what we've done in the past. Uh, one big, one big uh, change is that you'll actually be starting your day out uh, at the college of your students' uh, uh, major. And so um, making sure that your student has the proper major, and I will bring that up a few times throughout this conversation, uh, make sure that they know what their major they want to major in is going to be really important this year, just so we don't have you walking all over campus, you know, it gets kind of hot in Alabama. And then in July, it likes to rain more than any other month of the year. So uh, that is one big aspect of it. Um, on campus, uh, your students will get to meet a lot of incoming new students. That's that's the same, but uh, they will also have some opportunities uh, to to work with their advisor, and it may be most likely in a virtual format when they are working with those advisors. So um, technology is another big piece that we um, are going to ask you all to bring this summer as well. So please know, um, you know, making sure your students' major is set up, and also bringing that laptop uh, is probably going to be your best bet. So. Um, I do have some other options, uh, some other things I'd like to talk to y'all about uh, when it comes to Bama Bound New Student Orientation and making sure that your student is prepared. So, Tuan, if you can go ahead and hit the next slide. Maybe, maybe. All right, so some pre-orientation items. Um, I think the first and foremost, we really need to encourage our students to, be, to start checking their Crimson email account. Um, if they haven't done that yet, they really need to do that as soon as possible. This is the only way that advisors can communicate to these students. Um, and so starting that off now is going to only encourage them to do that throughout the uh, next, you, however many years that they're going to be at Alabama uh, to really start doing that on, on a daily basis. Uh, once they get here to the university, like, you know, they may have a class cancel, they may have an assignment pop up randomly, they may have just anything. And so checking those Crimson accounts earlier in their uh, academic career is just, it, it, to get that trend started is going to be very important. And so checking that Crimson account I would say at least once a week, if not once every day, preferably once every day, just so that as they're getting closer to Bama Bound, if the advisors need to reach out to them, if they want to, if there are opportunities that the university is going to provide them um, in their first year, they really want to get to know that. So checking their Crimson email account every day is probably the biggest piece of advice that I could provide them. The next thing is knowing where Blackboard is and, and, and preparing uh, and, and going through Blackboard and just checking that out because that is where some information for the students will be housed prior uh, to their orientation session. And I'll go, kind of go into that here in a little bit um, to kind of discuss uh, what that Blackboard is going to be, uh, what, what's going to be housed in that. Submitting their action card photo, that can be done now if they've registered for orientation and they can actually download their action card to their phone. Um, it's something fun that they can do and they can show that they're, they can show their pride uh, that they're coming to the University of Alabama already to their, to their uh, friends and uh, family member like, hey, I'm official, I can come to, I'm going to the University of Alabama. 
And also that's going to be helpful as they as they arrive to their BAM event session. If they arrive late, they, you know, that that action card can get them into the building. Um, or at least that's what we are hoping and we are working with housing about to make sure that happens. Memorizing their campus wide ID is another big important item that they need to start doing now. Uh, that is like that is their lifeline to a lot of information to to the campus for a lot of information that they will need throughout their four years. But memorizing it now is going to be really important, especially as they get here to campus. Um, if they decide to change their major, if they decide to pretty much do a lot of things, um, that campus wide ID number is probably going to be one of the first things they are asked. And so fumbling through and trying to find it uh, when when they're asked uh, to need it. It just takes a little bit longer for everybody. So if they've never found their campus wide ID, if they log into their MyBama, click on the top right corner, have the little drop box, and then go to degree works, their number will be in the top left corner. It's pretty easy to find. Something else uh, that they can start doing now or you know, as they get closer to their session is start looking at our academic catalog, see what classes they may be interested in, see what uh, uh, if the classes for their major is something that they're really, if that's something they really want to do, they're going to have to take general electives. Maybe they start looking at those. What are the, some of those electives that they want to take um, to fulfill those, those, those general election, uh, those core competencies, basically. If your student hasn't declared a major or is interested in switching a major, the, the Career Center's website is um, it can help them through that process. Um, and really just checking their major to make sure that, you know, if they applied back in July or August and, you know, they're they, they've decided to change or their, their passions have changed over the last year or they've had conversations with people and they're like, hey, I may not want to be X major, I want to be Y major now really making sure that their major is right and making sure that they um, are going to be in the right college that they want to be in. Um, and once again, if they don't know what they want, that's fine. They can be an undecided student and they will work with uh, our Capstone Center for Student Success and they will work uh, with them to try to get, get them to decide what uh, major they can take later on. Um, but really, making sure that the major that, that they want is the correct one. And if, if not switching uh, that, that form, uh, switching that major before they get to Bama Bound. That's going to be very important because once again, like I said earlier, they are going to be starting off their day at uh, the college of their choice. Something else that's not required prior to Bama Bound, but is also something that you need to be a little bit more strategic about this summer than we've been in the past is submitting the immunization form um, with COVID. And if, if you decide to get an, uh, your student immune, um, give them the immunization uh, for the COVID, the shots, they're not going to give those students um, the immunizations that the university requires around that same time. So if you wait until the end of uh, the summer to do the COVID vaccination, and then you are wanting to also do immunizations like the TB test um, and, and whatnot, they're not going to do all that at the same time. So you may need to start thinking about that and planning that out before they get to campus. Please know that the COVID vaccination is not required. It is not mandatory for students to come to the university. Highly encouraged, but not required. And then lastly, uh, do your math or foreign language uh, assessment. Um, I am always a big component of this math, uh, math and foreign language uh, assessments. They are not going to hurt your student. They can only help. Um, and I'm going to go into that in, uh, I believe, the next slide. So Tawan, if you want to go ahead and move me to the next slide. Yes, 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 yes. So the math placement assessment. If your student applied to the university as a test optional student, which means they didn't want to take the SAT or didn't want to take the ACT or they didn't perform as well as they thought they were going to, um, and they, they, uh, they applied um, under the test optional option, they're still going to be required to take the math placement assessment. Um, 
all incoming new students will be added in, into the math placement assessment and it can be found on your students blackboard um, so it'll be found in your students blackboard um, you can only take it once uh, so just know that you can only take it once there's really no point in really like studying or cramming for the for the assessment um, because it's going to cover a lot of different things um, it can't hurt you it can only help you so if your student comes in with uh being placed in a math 10 math 125 and takes the assessment and finds out that he they he or she uh assessed into a math 112 they can still register for 125 it will not hurt them later on down the road when they come to bama bound for uh course registration what i would also suggest is that your student try to get it done at least one week prior to their to the session um, doing it any closer may just affect their your students ability to register for an upper upper level class if they if they assess into an upper level class um, and also having uh, making sure that that is, that assessment piece is in there will only give your student and uh, that much more peace of mind as they go through the advising process and go through um, the course registration process so just um, so just know that very much encourage your student to take that math placement assessment at least a week in advance the foreign language assessment is not required but if you know your student did really really well um, in a certain language and they would like to try to place out of it to get credit um, or up into a higher higher uh, foreign language definitely encourage them as well but it's also not required tawana can we go to the next slide awesome so one thing that we, um, one little thing about the math placement before I do move on, uh, you all students who did not take the plat math uh, did did apply as test optional will receive an email and instructions on how to get to the math placement. So please know that that is that is something that we will we will be sending an email out to everybody about. So your packing list, um, we really uh, this this will get sent to you and your student in an email. But I just thought I'd like uh, cover some of the bigger things uh, before you receive this email leading up to your students Bama bound session. One is the parking code. We will be mailing that out to, to students and parents. Uh, you'll most likely receive it about seven days prior to your session and that is for the Ferguson, um, the Ferguson Center uh, parking deck. That, that is if you're staying on campus or uh, if you are um, going to be at the Ferguson Center that is where you're going to want to park so please know that you will receive a code about seven days uh, before your session so make sure you know what that is directions to campus uh, that that will be in the email as well how to get to the Ferguson Center or for you nursing majors how to get to the Capstone uh, College of Nursing because um, that is that is where the Capstone College of Nursing students will be starting their day on day one we're asking everybody to bring two face mask coverings as well uh, as you go through the summer. Um, as we go through these events, those are going to be required in the in, in UA facilities. So please know that it, please bring at least two. Um, it does get hot, it gets very sweaty at, in Alabama, especially during the summertime. And just to make sure that you have a sufficient number of face coverings uh, throughout the your orientation session. Like I said earlier, uh, bringing an umbrella or a raincoat does not hurt july in alabama um, you just never know if it's going to rain it could be beautiful one minute and storming the next and there have been a lot of times where folks got caught in the rain so please bring an umbrella and or a raincoat and then also bring a reusable water bottle um, a lot of our in our um around campus the drinking fountains are not usable but the uh, refillable water stations are. Uh, we really encourage families and students to bring their own water bottles. There are still vending machines all over campus. Uh, there, is, there are some coffee shops around campus. There's some things that you, you can get uh, some kind of liquid refreshment, but bringing your own reusable water bottle is something we very much encourage. 
Technology, like I spoke earlier, uh, we really are encouraging students to bring their own technology. There are going to be there there are going to be colleges that, uh, for one reason or another, just do not have a computer lab for their students to be able to register. Um, and so, having that laptop, um, I can think of two colleges off the top of my head: engineering and business. Having that laptop, um, if it's probably going to be the best thing for your student and, and to bring. Um, also, bringing a uh, bringing some sort of tablet or saying, "Oh, I've got a phone, I'll be fine." That really doesn't do uh, do things as well as bringing their own laptop. Um, it, because of some of the COVID restrictions and because of some things that our advisors are concerned about, advising may happen over. Zoom or may happen over uh, one of our other technologies that the university has. So having that ability to see your advisor um, a little larger than just through a tablet makes it a lot easier. Being able to go home, uh, go back to the residence hall or wherever you're staying the night and look through the card catalog and checking out those courses that your advisor decided to um, suggest you take is a lot easier using a laptop. Um, and then also just registering for your courses, um, especially some of those uh, courses that take, have to have a bio, uh, a lab or some kind of recitation or something. Having a laptop makes that whole process that much easier. It can be done with a phone, it can be done with a tablet, but everyone that I've talked to, every, every advisor has said, use a laptop, use a laptop, use a laptop. Uh, your student will also receive in this packing list uh, the ability to borrow a laptop from the university if, you know, you just do not have the finances for a new laptop, you're waiting to talk to an advisor to figure out what kind of laptop your student may need um, before buying one, uh, please know that we will have that as an option. Um, I know you're going to laugh about a coat or a sweater uh, or a sweatshirt or something to keep you warm. Uh, but these buildings in the South, uh, we know what AC is and we like to use it. So it could be 100 degrees outside and then you walk into a building and it would feel like it's 60 degrees. So if you're cold natured, um, please bring some kind of coat, sweatshirt, sweater, something to keep you warm. I've seen people bring blankets. Uh, they always joke that it's just the soup store trying to make more money because um, keeping the building so cold. But really, there are many, many, many jokes about the Alabama and their ability to uh, keep buildings cold during the summertime. Uh, it's always good to bring some kind of photo identification, especially if you opt to get a plastic um, action card, bringing that to the uh, taking when you go pick that up, you will need that, that form of driver's license, military ID, whatever you may have. And then any um, special admissions documents or unofficial transcripts. So um, uh, unofficial AP scores, unofficial uh, um, uh, club scores, any of those types of things are gonna be very important to bring with you as well. Tawana? All right, some pre-Bama bound tasks. That's probably the more, um, important uh, uh, slide that I'm gonna go over. First, just know um, you, uh, your student will get into a, a Blackboard course in their academic area. Uh, so whatever college school or center that they've uh, been uh, put into or where their major is being housed or their program is being housed and a Bama bound Blackboard course seven days prior to their orientation. Bama bound course is there and will be there for your student over the next four years as a reference, as a guide, as a tool so that they can figure out how to get involved on campus. So if they need to uh, utilize resources on campus, this Bama bound Blackboard is going to be all the knowledge that your student is going to need for the next four years. Um, so being able to just go through that on their leisure, um, if they're bored or if they you know, are getting closer to getting closer to August and they want to be like, all right, so how do you get involved on campus or where are the dining halls on campus and those types of things, they can look through this BAM of M uh, Blackboard course. It is not required of them. There's no tests, there's no assessments, no matter what you may have heard from last year's group. Last year's group did have all those things. This year's group does not. 
The big thing though, is having your student go through the academic area uh, course. That is gonna be very important for your student. They're gonna learn a lot about their, uh, about their academic college or school or center. They're gonna find out more about their, possibly learn a little bit more about their major. But the thing that's really going to assist them and help them out is the advising sheet. Um, this advising sheet is the closest thing to being required uh, that we can say is required without it being required. Um, a lot of our, it's only going to help them in the end because some of these colleges, I can think of the Capstan College of Nursing, they will send you some, some suggested um, courses if you fill this sheet out in a timely manner. Um, so our, it will help with the advising process. It will help with the um, registration process if you, your student fills this form out sooner than later. Uh, they will get emails from our office. They will get emails from their advisor. They will get just a lot of emails saying, hey, get in there, get it done. It's only a few slides, just make it happen. Like I said, the sooner, the better. Um, getting that if they get it on a monday have them try to get it done that monday just to just so that their advisor know that they are committed to the university and committed to their degree some of the items on those advising sheets um, are going to ask for any kind of dual credit hours if your student has gone through um, any kind of dual credit hours or if they've gone through early college through the university or through a community college near near where you're at also, any unofficial AP, uh, CLAP, or BIT uh, tests, um, test scores are going to be asked in that as well, just so your, your uh, advisors know, like, oh, they may have scored a five on their math test, which means they can get into a certain math um, level. And then possibly any uh, last semester grades um, in certain courses at their high school. So just anything that they, any information that the, the advisors um, feel are important and that can help the help your student um, through this whole process. But I would definitely say make sure your student gets that advising sheet done and taken care of prior to coming to the uh, like day one, if not day two, uh, of getting access to their uh, Blackboard courses. So um, one thing that we always really like to talk about, and I know Kim may talk about this either today or in another um, another uh, piece before Bama Bound is advising expectations. Um, like I said earlier, some colleges might email you course suggestions prior to Bama Bound. By filling out that sheet, by filling out those forms that they're asking you to fill out, you could be walking into Bama Bound with a lot of information that your other fellow college students may not have. Uh, so getting that done and getting that taken care of sooner than later is going to be huge. But know that there's going to be times during Bama Bound where you can where you can ask questions, talk to an advisor, say, why do you think I should be taking this course? So know that there's going to be those times um, and that they can definitely work with you, uh, work with your student on making sure that they have the best, best first semester experience so that they, they can take that first step um, into doing great things over the next few years. Also make sure that your student realizes that they may not be the only student that is getting advised by an advisor at the same time. Uh, some of our larger colleges do do some group advising sessions, especially when it comes to certain um, certain majors, uh, how many students are in that in that session, how many of the same majors are in there. So make sure that your student realizes that they may be not just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with uh, with an advisor, it may be them with three or four or five or six other people in the same advising session. And then lastly, just make sure they realize that, you know, 8 a.m. classes still exist at the University of Alabama, and they're probably going to, they should expect to have at least one or two um, of those classes, and that we still hold classes on Friday here at the University of Alabama as well. Um, taking, having that, that, that wonderful schedule that they only take, you know, Monday through Wednesday, uh, Thursday classes and they don't have 8 a.m.s and they, can, they start after, after uh, noon is really difficult for an incoming new student, especially freshmen. So making sure that they understand that there's some expectations there when it comes to um, working 
getting their schedule. It's not that we're not going to get them the class that they need. It may be the fact that the, it's just not the time that they want, but it's the class that they need to make sure that they're gonna graduate in four years. And then lastly, um, just make sure that they realize that our advisors are the experts. They know each one of those majors, front ways, back ways, sideways, around ways, any way that you could think about. And so they, um, being able to provide your student, you with that proper information is very, very important to them. And they want to make sure that they are successful in the next four years. And so listening to their advisor is probably the most important thing that they can do. Going back and asking a, uh, one of our student leaders or orientation leaders, a peer advisor, somebody else, like, do you really believe that what the advisor just said? Um, it's probably not the best idea. And to just support them in that, to make sure that they feel supported, that they, that the advisor said what they needed to say and that it was the most, that the information that they gave them was very important. We are super excited, well, that's all my time, but we are very excited to see you all this summer. Um, we are so glad that we get to do, do this experience on campus. Um, and once again, if you all have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or uh, Kim Starrett. So thank you so much, Stephen. We really appreciate you taking the time, the time to give families um, an overview. So next we'll move on to um, our Director of Parent and Family Programs, Kim Starrett, to let us know a little bit what family orientation will look like. Thank you. Stephen, actually, before you um, turn off your mic, can I ask you a quick question? Um, for students who are attending virtual orientation, um, when can they expect to know or to um, be able to plan exactly what time frames they need to be available for a live um, session as part of their virtual orientation experience? Will they get that that schedule a, a week before their before their scheduled date, or um, what is that timeline for them? Um, actually, uh, we should have a example schedule for those uh, virtual students on our website um, sooner than later. We have sent it to the to our web folks, and they should be putting that on our website sooner than later. Um, and so those students will actually be um, having a pretty much the exact same experience as any of our incoming new students, except they will be at home in their pajamas on their couch and our students will be in Tuscaloosa. Um, so really, uh, really, they just need to be available from roughly 9 a.m. Central Standard Time to about five o'clock Central Standard Time on day one and then about 9, 9.30 uh, a.m. on day two, all the way through uh, one o'clock. 1.30 uh, Central Standard Time um, on day two as well. So just know that, that 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 schedule will be on our website. If it isn't already, it will be very soon. Awesome. And then for one day virtual orientation participants, they should expect to be online from approximately when to when? Uh, they should be prepared to be online from, I believe, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time through about four, 5 o'clock Central Standard Time. Terrific. Thank you so much. That will be really helpful as families and students plan um, going forward because it, it does vary just a tad from what um, parents and family members uh, can expect. So thank you, Stephen, so much for that great information. Um, I just no want to reiterate... Um, some of the pieces that Stephen mentioned as far as where a student uh, can change their major. Uh, My Bama is a, a, holds a plethora of information for students and where they can access different things. And so it is through mybama.ua.edu that students can change their major, students can check their Crimson email account, students can access the Blackboard course that Stephen mentioned. Uh, for Bama bound purposes, as well as all of their academic course uh, material will be in it through my Bama as well. And they can also find their CWID, as Stephen mentioned, um, as well as figure out what their major currently is, according to the university, if they are not certain what perhaps they selected uh, on their application. All of their CWID and their major they can find in DegreeWorks. And again, they can access that through my Bama as well. Um, 
Again, my name is Kim Sterrett, Director of Parent and Family Programs. We are super excited to uh, welcome you into the Bama family. Tawana, would you mind going to the next slide? I just wanna briefly touch on the what, when, who, where, why of parent and family orientation. And I mean briefly, so hang with me. Um, talk a moment if you have not yet registered to attend um, and are not aware of the cost, talk a little bit about that or are wondering why it costs that uh, fee, what top topics are covered. And we can talk a little bit through the schedule of what to expect depending on which type of orientation you are um, attending, and then what else you need to know as well. What is parent and family orientation? It is an orientation program specifically for parents and family members of incoming UA undergraduate students. It does run concurrently with new student BAMA bound orientation with some brief overlaps. So the, the key about this is that you will not be with your student if you are attending an on-campus session for um, the entire program. So 90% of the programming is actually separate from the, what the student will experience. We do that because we know that you all have different questions than what students ask or what students want to know. And so we wanna make sure that we are providing parents and family members with the information that they need in order to feel reassured about their, about their students' um, choice of UA and to feel prepared to bring them back and to be, feel informed so that you know how to best support your student while they are here on campus. If you have questions about when uh, orientation dates are, we do run orientation from the end of May all the way through um, right before classes begin in August. And so you can go to our website at parents.sa.ua.edu or just parents.ua.edu. It will, you can get there through either link, um, go to the orientation tab, and then select dates and schedule to figure out. Now, I will say that if you pull up the orientation registration system, again, through that orientation tab, and there is a date on that dates and schedule page that does not uh, show up in the orientation registration system, then that means that that session is not either, you are not eligible for that session or that that session um, or that your student is not eligible for that session or that se session is full. Um, and so that dates and schedule is going to likely uh, list a lot more dates than what you will see in the orientation registration system. We are limiting students to one parent or family member um, per registered student this summer for space purposes. And so, uh, however, no matter if you or your, and your student are attending an in-person session or an on-campus session, I should say, or a virtual session, you will receive the same information that you uh, would get in either delivery method, as well as um, you will receive all of that information digitally, both as an on-campus participant, as well as an, a virtual participant that you can then share with other family members. So um, don't feel like you will be the only person that the, the or the person that attends is the only person to, to have access to that information. You can actually absolutely share it with uh, other folks that you need to share it with. For on campus sessions, it will, uh, the majority of our programming happens in the Ferguson Center. However, um, as Stephen mentioned, we will start out in the different colleges um, and there are some information sessions that will take place in our North Lawn Classrooms building. And so um, we will talk a little bit later, but make sure that you are wearing decent walking shoes. Um, and should you need assistance getting to those different locations, we will have um, some assistance vehicles that can get you to those locations so that you do not need to walk long distances. If you'll just let our office know that that's something you'll need, um, you can either contact us at, via email at parents at ua.edu or via phone number that I'll give you at the end of this presentation. Or you can even just let us know at check-in that you'll need that assistance and we'll make sure that we um, provide you the details of where you need to meet up with someone who can get you where you need to go. And then virtual happens wherever you'd like. So if you want to tune into virtual orientation from the beach, we will be jealous, but you are welcome to do that wherever you want to tune in from. 
why you should attend parent and family orientation. It does give you the information that you need to know in order for you to support your students better. It gives you access to campus partners. It gives you a chance to visit your students' academic college or school. And let me take a moment to explain what that means because um, the University of Alabama is a large university made up of several different colleges and schools. And so we have um, colleges like the uh, Arts and Sciences, College of, Culver House College of Business, um, those different types of colleges. And depending on what your student's major is, that is how they know which college that they are a member of and, and the academic advisors, advisors who will advise them. We also have the School of Social Work. Uh, we also, your student may be uh, advised or you might visit with the Capstone Center for Student Success. The Capstone Center advises students who are part of our Crimson Edge program as well as students who are undecided. And so um, you may be uh, going to a, a specific college or school or you may be going to the Capstone Center um, if you are attending on campus or if you're attending virtually you may be tuning in to a presentation by a college or school or by the Capstone Center for Student Success. And we will let you know what, what works and what is most appropriate for you and your family. It allows you to talk to current students and hear about their experiences at UA. This is um, the case for both on-campus and virtual um, experiences and sessions. And it allows us to, it allows us parent and family programs to connect with you um, because we are here for you throughout the duration of your student's experience here on campus. And so um, we wanna make sure that you uh, know who we are and we are able to know who you are as well. For those of you who have not yet registered, you can do that two different ways. Either your student can register you for Bama Bound um, through their My Bama access. They just go ahead and register a parent or family member. Um, reminder that registration fees are non-refundable and I'll talk about that in the next slide. If you um, or your student in that orientation registration system can create a guest login um, by entering a parent or family member's name and email address and, and creating a pin for that person, for that person to then go into the registration system later. They can, you can access that through parents.ua.edu on the orientation tab and uh, enter your email address and your PIN that your student set up for you, and you can go ahead and register yourself. Should you have any issues with either of those methods, you are welcome to contact our office via email or phone number, um, and we are happy to help you along the way. It does cost $40 per family member to attend uh, parent and family orientation, whether you are attending an on-campus session or a virtual session. Um, what that $40 goes to is to um, to support our student staff. Um, we do have a team of orientation leaders who are really excited to meet you and be able to provide you lots of information this summer. Uh, we train them for an entire semester plus some. Um, we provide their uniforms, their stipends, um, those types of things. Um, it pays for your, uh, or it covers your orientation materials for virtual participants. We will mail those materials to you. Um, it allows us to reserve space on campus. Um, we have a great uh, platform for our, all of our digital content, which is through our UA Crimson Connection. And so it pays for that platform license. Um, and then a portion of your fee, a small portion, will also support communication and programming that is provided by our office throughout the duration of your student's tenure here at UA. Uh, as a reminder, we mentioned this earlier, parent and family orientation fees are non-refundable um, and families who are who have financial need can apply for a parent and family orientation wa fee waiver. Uh, you can find more information about that at parents.ua.edu and then the orientation tab and then registration. Here are some of the topics that are covered and a, a brief overview of what our schedule is. So. Uh, for two-day on-campus sessions, and I'll cover each of the different styles of orientation this summer. So uh, for two-day on-campus, your day one, we will start at uh, open check-in uh, at 7.30 a.m. and check-in will go until 9.30 a.m. Now, that is a two-hour period of time. So what I would say is 
You don't want to be too early because then you might not have anything to do, but you don't want to be too late because you also need to potentially walk across campus to get to your student's college before our welcome begins at 9.30 a.m. So just make sure that you kind of hit that sweet, sweet spot. If For those of you who like to be early birds and want to get here right at 7.30, that's great. Um, just be prepared to maybe grab a cup of coffee um, or to relax a little bit before you head over to the college um, when programming will begin at 9.30. On day one, programming will then conclude at 5 p.m unless you would like to eat dinner with your student, that is optional. Uh, what, as I mentioned of what is covered in that orientation fee, we did not, uh, we do not cover any meals as part of the orientation fee this year, um, simply so that we could make the virtual orientation fee and the on-campus orientation fee the same rate. Um, and so, uh, we will pause for meals during our orientation programming, um, but you will just pay at that food location, that food service location uh, with either debit or credit. They will not be accepting cash. Um, they are not accepting cash right now. So just plan in advance for that. But again, we will we will get you to that food. Um, it just will be something that you put, pay for at the counter. The different topics that we cover on day one, there's a welcome, the college visit, some uh, parent and family orientation Q&A with the college representatives, um, sessions with parent ambassadors that, that uh, cover information about student involvement and Bama basics, which are things like how your student uses their ACT card, which is their ID, um, information about the bookstore, the different options of how students can get books, because that's vastly different. Um, than what it has been in the past uh, or what you might experience on other campuses. Uh, about transportation and parking, meal plans, those different types of things. Uh, you should be prepared um, that some, the majority of our programming, you will be in the same room as a presenter, as the presenter. However, there might be a couple instances where you are not in the same room as the presenter. Um, I, some of the college visits do not have enough space for both parents and family members and all students to be in the same room as the presenter. So they may Zoom their live presentation into a room of parents and family members while students are in the room with the live presenter. Um, however, then for the Q&A, they will go into the room with parents and family members to answer questions uh, live and in person. Uh, the same I think that that pretty much might be, oh, the same as the welcome. Um, as Stephen mentioned, you start out in your colleges, uh, in the colleges with your students. And so we will be streaming that welcome uh, throughout all of those locations so that everyone can see the same thing. So I wanna prepare you for that, that some of those presentations, the person will be in your room, some they may not. Um, some may be presentations by parent ambassadors who are or orientation leaders. So you'll see a little bit of everything um, throughout your orientation experience. And, and for, well, I'll get to virtual uh, sessions a little bit later. Some crucial conversations by parent and family programs. Um, those are conversations that we hope that you'll have with your student leading up to the fall. And then some choose your own adventure uh, information sessions, which basically means that you get to choose which information sessions you uh, go to based on your student's interest or your interest um, throughout the rest of the day. And then on day two, you again have the option to eat breakfast with your student should you like. Um, again, you can just pay for that at the dining facility. Um, programming starts on day two at 8.30 a.m. and concludes around 12 p.m. or whenever your student is done registering. So parents and family members, you'll actually be done uh, around 12 p.m., but, um, but your student may not be done at that point. Um, so you'll, you'll have to kind of play that by ear. Um, they should be done by one o'clock though, for those of you who are planning flights. Remember if you're planning travel out of Birmingham, it does take an hour to get to the Birmingham airport from Tuscaloosa. So plan that in, um, plan additional time to return a rental car if that's something you're doing. If you are traveling in and out from a, the Atlanta airport, it is roughly three hours from the Atlanta airport. And then remember when you are uh, for your return flight, 
you uh, lose an hour because they are in the Eastern time zone and we are in the Central time zone. So plan that in as well into your travel time. On day two, we cover student life, diversity, equity, inclusion on campus, housing uh, information about that transition to life at UA. So what your student can expect from on-campus housing, the move-in process, our student account services presents way to, way to pay. So it talks about um, how you can anticipate paying for your students' um, college experience, specific like the logistics of what that payment process looks like because they do not send invoices home anymore or, or billing statements. Um, and then uh, UAPD will talk about campus safety. And again, you'll have another session with parent ambassadors who cover all the student wellness support resources on campus and then we will close with our office talking about some next steps and what you can expect going forward. The two-day virtual session covers all of the same content, but some of the information is live streamed and some of it is on demand. So in that it will be posted in the UA Crimson Connection and you can consume that information uh, as, as it's convenient to you. So on day one of a two-day virtual session, our live stream starts at 9.30 a.m. Central Time and concludes around 3 p.m. Central Time. Any of the remaining sessions uh, for that day are on demand. And then day two, we will start streaming at 9.45 a.m. and conclude around 11 a.m. Central Time. And again, some remaining sessions are on demand that you can consume as you like. As I mentioned, all of those same topics, all of those same sessions, um, just so you know what to uh, block off in those days and when you want to be available. Tawana, can you go to the next slide? Our one day virtual session is, a, is very different from what the, the two day virtual session is. And so our stream, our live stream will start at 9 a.m. Central Time and we will stream our welcome session, our, the session about housing, our session about some of the campus life, um, act card, bookstore, dining plan, transportation, camp, mail, how did your student gets mail, those types of things and student involvement. We'll hear from student account services and then hear from our office about next steps. And then once we conclude that live stream at 12 p.m. Central Time, then you will have um, the access to the on-demand sessions that will include your student's college visit, crucial conversations, and then some choose your own adventure information sessions. And again, all of that on-demand content will be in the UA Crimson Connection. And then it, should you be attending a one day on campus August, session in August, um, our check-in will open at 8 a.m. and programming will begin at 9 a.m. Um, and then it will conclude around 3 p.m. The face-to-face -face sessions that will take place, there are some that are face-to-face, -face, but then there are also some that are still on demand that will supplement your face-to-face -face experience that um, we just simply don't have time for everything. And so uh, you'll still be able to access some of that content on demand through the UA Crimson Connection. Okay, so what else do you need to know? Number one, we wanna make sure that you confirm your students, um, that your student is registered for a Bama Bound session before making travel arrangements and double check the format. Don't don't book a flight if your student has registered for a virtual session or do book a flight if your student has registered for an on-campus session. Make sure you also know the number of days um, because we offer some one-day sessions and some two-day sessions. Make sure that you know uh, exactly when your student session begins and, and concurrently then your um, your parent and family orientation session begins and ends. Uh, if your student changes their Bama Bound session, then your registration will automatically be changed. So you do not need to uh, do that manually. It will just be automatic. Once you've registered um, and you may have already received some of this information, you'll receive an immediate confirmation of your registration. You'll also within the next 24 hours re uh, receive some information regarding accessibility, diet related and interpreter accommodation requests so that you can, um, should you need any of those accommodations, you can contact our office. Um, and then 
around May 3rd, you will receive an electronic confirmation packet from our office that covers some of the, the content that we talked about this morning, but also some additional content that you will need to know in order to prepare and be ready for your orientation experience. One week prior to your orientation session, you'll receive a link from our office that, set, that has a link to our academic essentials session that we really hope that you will view before your student's orientation session so that you are prepared um, to go into that college visit. So you know the different roles and responsibilities of the folks that you'll meet. Um, and we can talk through some of the curriculum, vernacular or curriculum vocabulary that you'll, they'll use so that you better understand what that looks like. Um, and then for those attending on-campus sessions, you'll receive the parking and, and directions information that Stephen mentioned. And those who are attending the virtual, uh, virtual session, you'll re receive a reminder of those live stream times. Before coming to Tuscaloosa, before getting on that plane, before getting in your car, the morning of your orientation session, before you come to campus, if you or your student have any symptoms, um, you are not feeling well, you have um, a fever, uh, your student is experiencing or you are experiencing any type of COVID symptoms, we ask you to please reschedule. Um, we know that this may mean that you are already here. Um, it puts many folks at risk uh, of potentially spreading COVID um, should you be coming, should you choose to come to campus while you're symptomatic or, or come to Tuscaloosa while you're symptomatic. So please, um, we have plenty of different opportunities for you to reschedule and your student to reschedule. They will not miss out on a Bama bound experience. They will not miss out on registering for classes. Um, we can absolutely reschedule them to a different date. So um, please make sure that you, we ask that you do this, that if you or your student have any symptoms that you go ahead and reschedule. What to bring, Stephen mentioned two um, mask or face coverings for each day um, that you're coming. We, we are gonna require proper mask wearing during all orientation programming. Um, please bring a refillable water bottle, appropriate dress for walking, so comfortable shoes. It will be hot, so something comfortable um, to be in hot weather. It is going to be cold in the air conditioning, so make sure you bring some sort of sweater or sweatshirt and then be prepared to walk in the rain. Um, now, I do wanna also mention, all of this is the same for your students, so make sure that they are prepared for walking to be hot and to be cold and to walk in the rain. As I mentioned earlier, programming is separate, so they are going to need their own gear. You get to take the day off or two days off from being their pack mule. You do not have to carry all of their belongings around for them. They need to be prepared to carry all of their belongings for themselves and to uh, have their own umbrella or have their own rain jacket. Um, so make sure that you are, are planning for that. Post orientation, you can expect um, access to all of the information plus additional information that we did not have time to cover during your actual orientation session. And so uh, all of that will be in the UA Crimson Connection. If you have not yet created your free profile, through UA Crimson Connection. Um, you can do that at parents.ua.edu. The UA Crimson Connection is where we post all information throughout your student's entire time on campus. Um, and however, you do have to be registered for orientation to have access to that orientation specific information. So, so you can go ahead and create your free profile, but um, you will need to re register for orientation if you want the orientation specific information. You will have the opportunity to complete a parent and family orientation evaluation after you attend orientation. And you will also have the opportunity to attend other live virtual events to meet other incoming UA families throughout the summer. So we will send you a schedule of different regional group, or regional meetups, uh, affinity group meetups, um, some current student panels and current family panels. So um, you'll get a full schedule of the summer so that you can join us for some of those live virtual events. Um, for those of you who are curious about our affinity groups, you can go to our website, parents.ua.edu on the involvement tab, and you can check out the different affinity groups that we offer um, and, and look forward to meeting some of the members of those different groups.
Should you have any questions, feel free to email us at parents at ua.edu, call us at 1-800-392-2777. Or again, there's a lot of information um, that is available on parents.ua.edu. I just want to make sure that I have covered everything that I intended to cover. Um, we will be using uh, Zoom for all of our live virtual sessions, as well as many of our um, virtual orientation sessions that happen during the orientation programming. So if you have not uh, have not downloaded that uh, Zoom desktop client, you, you might want to do that. That will be or updated your Zoom desktop client that will make sure that you are able to uh, access what you need to do. You do not need to have a paid a subscription to Zoom, but you will just need to have Zoom access. And then we will also use a platform called Platform Q uh, that we will get more information about closer to your orientation session date later on. There's nothing that you need to do in advance right now to gain access to that, but there will be potentially later down the line. So just keep an eye out for that information. As Stephen mentioned, your student is getting information at your uh, at their Crimson email account. We will communicate with you through whatever email account you uh, or email address you provided when you registered for orientation. So if you are not getting those emails, then it likely means that there is something wrong with what you inputted. Uh, a lot of times there's a missing period or um, it says at something.com instead of .net. So um, if you aren't receiving e emails from our office and you know that you've registered for orientation, please call us um, so that we can update your email in our system. Other than that, I think that we have covered a lot of information. We appreciate you hanging in there with us. We hope that you find it helpful. Should you have any other questions, please contact us. And we look forward to either seeing you in person on campus this summer or online. Um, thanks so much. And I'm gonna hand it back to Tawana so she can close us out. Thank you so much, Kim and Steven. Uh Kim, I do have a follow-up question for you. And Stephen, you're, you can chime in if you would like. Is there a specific browser that needs to be used? I know last year um, we had a lot of issues with Safari. So if they are opening up Campus ESP in a certain browser, does it matter? And for students do, do they that are doing virtual, do they need to use a certain browser as well? I can speak to the UA Crimson Connection. Um, the UA Crimson Connection, we have not found there to be any issues. Um, for different uh, browsers. However, we will use um, Panopto uh, as video streaming service. You won't know that that's what we're using because you'll just see the video link. But um, we do know that that sometimes um, works best with Firefox. Um, so to use the UA Crimson connection, you can use any browser, but to, to stream some of those videos, you may want to use Firefox, Stephen. Do you have any thoughts on that? No, I agree uh, with everything. I don't believe that there's any <clears throat> um, suggested. I think Safari uh, is probably not the best one, but definitely using, um, I would say either Firefox or Chrome for some of our uh, videos and, 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 and whatnot is probably your best bet. Awesome. Well, thank y'all so much for taking the time uh, to speak with our UA25 families. And as Kim said, and Steven, we are just so excited to have y'all here on campus or virtually to be able to interact with you. And um, with that, we'll end and roll. Wait, time. Tawana, I, I have one more thing to say. I'm so sorry. I just That's remembered. Okay. That's okay. Go one ahead. of our frequently asked questions is, if my student is signed up for an on-campus session, can I attend a virtual session? Um, our orientation registration system will not allow for students and their family members to, to schedule separate orientation sessions. You have to register for the same one. However, what I will say is that if your student attends the on-campus session and you want to only take uh, receive all of your information virtually, the way you can do this is have your student go to orientation, have them check in for themselves, send them over to parent and family orientation check-in, which is on the other side of the same room, they can get your materials and bring them home to you. Um, and we will note that you are going to just receive all of the content, not in person, but at home. And you will just then later that day or the next day be able to access everything that you missed 
um, in the UA Crimson Connection. So you'll see the same presentations. It will just be recordings of them um, and it will be digital. So I did want to, to make that statement uh, for those folks who may still want all of the information and may want to register for orientation, but receive the information virtually instead of in person. Thank you, I'm sorry. That's okay, no, thank you, Kim. And again, roll tide and we will see you virtually or in person pretty soon. Bye-bye.